Hello there, Mr. Thompson here with a video math lesson on histograms. Um, in a series on statistics, particularly. Um, so, uh, histograms are involved with statistics and are a tool that will be used if you're um, doing statistics. Um, also known uh, as grouped data, um, it's one sort of visual representation of grouped data. So, that's my subtitle here. Um, <clears throat> histograms are useful when you have a bunch of numbers. So here I have a bunch of numbers. Okay, these could be um, ages of people or um, number of points they scored in some sports game or something like that. Could be anything. Um, the results of some sort of survey, whatever. So we've got a bunch of uh, numbers here, and we kind of want to just analyze them and say, what do these mean, and what are some patterns we can see? Okay, so a histogram is one good way to look for patterns and look for um, things that you can... I don't know, tell things you can determine from a bunch of numbers, okay? They make it easier to, to analyze. So um, the first thing we're going to do to make a histogram, before we do a histogram, we're going to make a, what's called a frequency table, okay? And this is just a table to sort of keep track of a few little things um, that are going to help us in making our histogram, okay? So we're not quite to the histogram um, level yet here. So we're going to, um, basically we're going to take our... Um, our data, our numbers, and organize them into groups, okay, or intervals, okay. So we've got this column here, and what I'm going to do is the I'm going to um, put my numbers into groups. The most common group that you that you'll see is by tens, okay. It's just sort of a uh, natural way to group numbers, okay. So that might that's what we're going to do here for now. So we'll go from zero up, and then from ten up, and then twenty up, and then thirty up. That's my largest numbers in the thirties, okay. Uh, so I don't need to go into the 40s or 50s or anything like that. But for different sets of data, of course, you'll have to consider what sort of what numbers you're dealing with. Um, <clears throat> and you'll notice a few things. First thing I'll say is this is not the only way to group data. You can do it by fives. We could go from you know zero to five, and then five to ten, and then ten to fifteen, and so on. The other things you'll notice I didn't put the upper limit on these um, intervals. Okay, this is from zero and up, and then this is from ten and up. So obviously. 11, 12, 13, these are going to go in here, These are, that's part of this group, okay, 1, 2, 3, part of this group. The reason we don't put an upper limit on here, if I put 0 to 10, then that's a bit confusing, which which one includes the 10, where does the 10 go? If I put 0 to 9 here, that's actually um, <clears throat> excluding some numbers, such as, if so if this is from 0 to 9, where do I put 9.5, okay? So w what I've done here is I've said this is from 0 up, and this is from 10 up. So anything up until 10 goes in here. If it's 10 or more, it goes in here. If it's 20 or more, it goes in here. So 19.99999 would go right here in this um, you know, uh, interval, in the 10 up um, before up until 20. So this first interval is basically 0 to everything up before 10. And there's no number that we can put for what is what comes before 10 um, when we include decimals. Um, there's an infinite number of um, numbers that are less than 10, but are more than even 9.99, right? You can, there's no limit to how many nines you can stick on the end of that or whatever else you wanted, okay? So, what we'll do here is we'll look at how many, in this, in this second column, we're going to put the number of numbers from our data set that fit in that category, okay? So, for example, the single digits, there's one, two, three, okay, two, one, and five, um, so that's three numbers, so I'm just going to stick a three there. My teens, I've got one, two, three, four, okay, so four in the ten to up till twenty, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven in the twenties, and then three in the thirties, thirty-three, thirty-nine, and thirty-five, okay, so I put a three there. All right, that's all the information I need to start my first histogram. We're going to leave this third column blank, we'll, we'll deal with that in a second. Okay, so a histogram is a lot like what people might <clears throat> uh, refer to as a bar graph. Um, it's graphed along sort of a horizontal axis here, and we're going to put some, you know, bars, sort of, hence the name bar graph typically. Um, and it's not too unlike a bar graph. So from 0 to 10, there were three, um, three uh, numbers that were in that range. So I'm going to put a sort of a vertical column that re that's, that is three high. I've used my graph paper here, one two, and three, okay, to represent my scale. Um, and then, of course, the from 10 to 20, there was four, so I make one that's four high. From the 20s, I make one that's seven high, and then for the 30s, another that is three. So, and then I put a, 
I need to have a scale here so I can say, okay, what is this? That's four. Okay, this is between six and eight, so it's seven. Okay, so I've got a scale there, and this gives me a visual representation of all these numbers. I can immediately look at this and see what's going on here, whereas this was a jumble of numbers. It's even worse now that I've got all these other things going on. So um, I'm not going to go into sort of necessarily all the things you can look at and see here. Um, I'm focusing right now on just simply the skill of creating and, and um, understanding histograms. So I can look at this and see you know, that there's three numbers in the group from 0 to 10. There's um, four in the group from 10 to 20, and so on and so forth. Okay, there's one, uh, That is called, again, that's called, you can just call it a histogram, um, but frequency histogram is perhaps a more um, appropriate, more uh, precise name. There's one more kind of histogram that we're going to make, um, and that we need to know how to make, and that is a percent frequency histogram. So this third column, I've labeled it percent frequency. Okay, so what we're gonna, um, what we want to figure out is, for the group from zero to ten, how, what, what percent of the numbers are in that group? Okay, well, there's three in that group, and there's a total of seventeen numbers. If you just count up how many numbers there are, there's seventeen. Of course, you can add this column, and you get seventeen. So to find out what percent the tens, the the single digits make up, we just do three divided by seventeen, and that is approximately eighteen percent. Okay, it rounds up to eighteen percent. Uh, and then the same for all these other ones. There's 4 out of 17 in the teens, so that's uh, about 24%. 7 out of 17 is 41%, almost half. Um, the numbers are coming from the 20s. And then there's 3, again, that's 18%. We've already done that calculation here, so I can just put 18 there. Okay, and now I'm going to graph <coughs> based on the same groupings, um, but my scale is going to be based on percents. And this graph may or may not end up looking... Um, like the previous histogram. It's some, sometimes it turns out to be similar. It just depends on how the numbers fall. Sometimes it'll, it'll look a bit different. Um, so, um, and they, there's, yeah. Um, so I'm going to make my first column uh, 18% based on my scale here. My next column 24% um, based on that scale. And then 41 and again 18. Okay, now admittedly this histogram looks a lot like this one. Um, they do look very similar, but um, that's not always going to be the case, and there is some slight differences and things like that. And again, I'm not going to go into in this um, video at the moment um, the implications and the information that these necessarily tell you. The first thing in order to be able to use histograms is simply to be able to make them and to just figure out what they're talking about. Okay, so um, we can tell from this graph that 41, uh, approximately 40, you know, you might not be able to tell necessarily from the graph, 40 or maybe a little more than 40% of the numbers come from the 20s, okay, and so on and so forth for each of these groups, okay. Again, this could very well be broken up in by fives or twos or whatever else, however precise you want, or even hundreds, depending on what kind of numbers you're looking at. Okay, so that is um, all there is to it on histograms and percent frequency histograms. Good luck, and I'll see you next time.